we had kind of done a big circle. Yep. And it's like, all we got to do is run over there real quick. Yep. If it's not happening, then we'll do something else. Well, it's a good thing we did, because the second we pulled up, I mean, we shut down, and it was just, there's one, there's one, there's yes. one. Boom, boom, boom. All right. Wow. Yeah. Just look wherever those shrimp are jumping, and that's where the fish are going to be. Got him. All right. Got him. Knew you could do it. Oh, yeah. That's awesome, man. Yeah. Come on, come on. Oh, he ate it. He ate it. He ate it. Nice, baby. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. I thought you said you had I to. I got him. Relax. Oh, dude, he just ripped my boat off. Oh. Awesome. Look at that big boy. The Hawks K Saltwater Experience, presented by Yellowfin, with Captain Tom Rowland and Captain Rich Tudor. We're perfectly positioned at Hawks K Resort right here where we can go up the Keys, we can fish right out of here, we can go down the Keys, we can fish offshore, we can fish in the very, very back country. We decided that we're gonna have the boat on the trailer, we're gonna leave early, we're gonna head down to the lower Keys and, and uh, maybe I can show you a couple of things that, that I like to do down there. So what's on the agenda this morning, you think? I'm gonna go look for some stuff. I like stuff. I'm gonna look for, I think we start out looking for a little baby tarpon. It's a good call, man, it's nice and calm. Yeah, it's not my favorite tide for them, but yeah. they tend to live where they live, you know? So, at least they're there. And uh, they may not be as happy as they can be sometimes, but... All these big weed lines around, maybe there'll be some activity on the edge of those, huh? Yeah. We had that outgoing tide, very calm in the morning, and that's gonna be a situation to where you can easily go and check a whole bunch of spots. And the secret to catch to checking a whole bunch of spots really fast is the binoculars. Oh man. We've both been using them for a long time, and on those slick, calm conditions, you can pull up, and very, very quickly, you can scan the whole area, and with what we're looking for is happening, it's unmistakable. It's so critical. Ooh, one just rolled right there. Okay, great. It's so critical that we make sure that we're on the fish we want to stop on because this is a fleeting thing, you know? So we got to be sure. Ooh, th three of them right behind us. Okay, Boom. Good. In range, I'm going to get that good. one. Good, let's do it. My plan that morning was to go to the first spot and start looking with the binoculars. Of course, we go to the first spot and the fish are blasting shrimp out of the water. And uh, so <laughs> we, we, you know, we start trying to fish. And there's another one right there. There's two little groups. There's one almost in range here and then another one up here. I'm just gonna get up in here and just kinda, there you go. Can you reach that? No. I think I can. I'm going. You're in. Be a surface bite here. Oh, they're gonna like that. Get that thing waking and it comes right over the, it's like fishing a frog in Lake Okeechobee. 12 o'clock. We tried fishing there for a little bit and it was pretty good. The fishing was on, but we weren't getting bites. We weren't getting them and I just kept thinking, these fish are right in amongst the weeds and every time we're throwing it out there, we're getting some weeds on our on our lures. It's hard for me to believe they wouldn't eat this. That's a good shot. Oh yeah, you should be able to get him. No weeds. Gosh, certainly they would come after that. So I decided, you know what? Hard decision, but let's leave these fish and go find something else. Ooh. So we, <laughs> you know, that's always a real wise choice. You know, the, the old adage is never leave fish to find fish. Heard something about that once. Yeah. I think we should run to another spot. Follow me. I mean, there's so many, and we're going to get later on the tide. But if you're not seeing anything up in there, not, not. Then we ought to roll. A single here or there. Yeah, let's go. Okay. It's hard to leave. You can stay here and burn up your whole day. We go to the first spot. Beautiful spot. Caught tons of fish here before. This is, you know, there are weeds. Everything's right. I'm not seeing you. No, nope, let's keep going. Okay, spot number two. Scan and scan and scan and scan. Nothing. These birds are going crazy like they be on a shrimp patch, but I don't, I don't see any tarpon. Let's go further up. Now we're starting to lose the tide, but we were able to scan six spots because quickly, we were quickly. doing it with the binoculars. 
So then it's like, well, man, it was happening back where we were. I don't know. Maybe we catch one where we found them earlier. Yeah, we could run back there. I mean, they were there. Let's just run over here. They were there freaking eating, but I don't know. We couldn't, couldn't figure out how to feed them. Go as fast as we can to the first spot that we stopped. I remember as we were pulling up, you are like, you watch. We're going to pull up here at the spot we left, and we're going to catch three right here. And I was like, yeah, that never happens. Yeah. Solid fish. close right here. Solid fish from where that bird is. Stay, all stay close to that power pole switch. There's a lot of fish. Yeah, well, we found all of them are right here. The fish were doing something funny that, that day. They were, it wasn't obvious what they were eating at first because a lot of times we call it a shrimp hatch, but there's also these little <laughs> uh, fish, and a lot of times they're eating those, and it's more of a sip. This day, for whatever reason, the shrimp weren't like what we normally see there. They were full-size shrimp like you get at the bait shop. They were pushing through there, and the fish were just crashing them. Got him. All right. Got him. Knew you could do it. It's a good one, too. That's awesome. This might be a God, big one. They were, they're so keyed in. What did you do different? I, I let it get under the surface a little. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's awesome, man. Yeah. And I was definitely in more of a volume of fish. Like an area where there was quite a few. I think it's just kind of a, almost a numbers game. They're definitely feeding on shrimp, the little tiny shrimp. That's good, because I got just a thing for them. This is a pretty decent fish. I wouldn't doubt that there could be some really big ones in here. There he is. <laughs> Very that nice. Was awesome. Persistence pays off. All the looking, all the glassing. We found him. Oh, yeah. That's awesome, man. The Hawks K Saltwater Experience, presented by Yellowfin, is brought to you in part by Hawks K Resort, the only key you'll need. Lorance, America's number one fish finder. Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's, your adventure starts here. Yeti, built for the wild. And by Hook, Power Pole, St. Croix Rods, and Vine. We went around to all these other spots that seemed that they were following the recipe that we have. They were, they, everything looked right there, but the fish weren't there and the shrimp weren't there and it wasn't happening in those spots. So because we were able to use the binoculars and because we actually started thinking with, with our head, not in our heart of like, it's gotta be happening someplace and just keep going until you run out of gas. We thought, you know what? It was happening right over there. We know it was happening right over there. We had kind of done a big circle, yep. and it's like, all we got to do is run over there real quick. Yep. If it's not happening, then we'll do something else. Well, it's a good thing we did, because the second we pulled up, I mean, we shut down, and it was just, there's one, there's one, there's one. Boom, boom, boom. It was so exciting, man. Yeah. Got him. All right. Got him. Knew you could do it. Oh, yeah. That's awesome, man. Persistence pays off. All the looking, all the glassing, we found him. There he is. <laughs> there that was is. awesome. Dude, there are a lot of tarpon in here. That's good, because I feel like catching a lot of tarpon today. Once we started seeing them popping the shrimp, I mean, you could see the shrimp jumping out of the water. I'm like, I've got shrimp. They're eating shrimp. There should be a reason why to do this. And instead of having it on the surface where I could see it, I, I slowed it down and just let it kind of stay under the surface a little bit and bam, I finally got a bite. It's amazing to see this much activity in this one spot. Check so many different spots that weren't happening. Pull up here and <laughs> they're all here. Hundreds of them. I mean, that's a big wad coming up. What I thought was interesting is everywhere else we were looking, the water was super clear and where the, all the action was happening is where that that, that grass had decayed and the water was dirty and it had low oxygen. You could see it, it was just this stain. You could smell it, it was kind of like a sulfur smell. And, you, and as that body of, of dirty, low oxygen water started to move across the clean grass, they came up to the surface. I believe they're up there kind of gasping for air. And then the tarpon are just coming up under them and boof, boof. This is definitely one of the best shrimp hatches I've seen, certainly in a long time. There's so many fish, as far as you can see. A lot of fish. 
You, and you can see the, the, the color water, I mean, it's, it's just so dirty from that decaying grass. You know when you're in the right spot when you see this dirty water like this with low oxygen level, that's where the tarpon are able to gulp that air and supplement their supply while everything else is struggling. There he comes. All right, he's ready for you. Okay. Man, he sure fought good. I know, he's hooked perfect. He's kind of tired. Yep, right Man. in the button. I mean, that, that shows you right there why these tarpon are so at home in these this dirty shrimp hatch watcher. He, he had so much energy. All these other fish and shrimp are struggling, just gasping for air, and they're just full energy. For whatever reason, they were so keyed in on those shrimp that they weren't eating anything else. And so I see this pretty early, and I'm like, you know what? This is a this is fly situation, and the fly is going to be better than anything else right now. And so I start sorting through my flies, and I find this little fly that I've had a lot of success with big tarpon on when they're eating shrimp, and just tie that on. And you know we're in these fish, and they are busting all over the place. And I saw a couple of shrimp hopping. They would hop out of the water and sit, and they would sit almost motionless. So I would take a long strip and sit there long strip and sit there and man I didn't strip it three or four times before wham I got one there he is oh there, there he is you got him yep. nice job dude right thing on that. <laughs> that's awesome one one cast in the right spot with the right fly yeah and that was it you were definitely in a massive fish there yeah but when I was throwing that jerk bait yep. I was in that I was in the fish just like that and I never saw a flash never saw anything this one, I threw it right in there, and immediately there's a flash. A little tiny, tiny just weren't interested in that other thing. Which I just got bit right now. Oh. Did you? We're going to be in them good. Woo-hoo-hoo, -hoo, that was great. That was cool. There he is. You got a double. Yep, double better. We're in them now, but oh, I we missed them. We are in them as good as you can get them. In this situation, they were really keyed into shrimp that was not moving, and I knew we had the right fly. I knew everything was there. I've got the combination, and we are going to catch these at will. I'm going to be able to catch them on fly until they quit doing what they're doing. This is about as good as I've ever seen a shrimp patch. Right in the button, too, man. Nice. Okay, I'm going. I'm stripped out. You tell me. You say go, and I'm fly. I'm firing. <laughs> Hurry. Got line stripped out. Nice. Get it off yet? There you go. Let go of it. <laughs> nice job, man. All different sizes. This is one of the, probably the average or maybe even smaller size. There's some whoppers, some mediums. Woo! this incredible shrimp hatch, you know, and we refer to it as a hatch, you know, just, I guess, because it's just kind of sounds like what, you know, in trout rivers, you'd have the hatch or the mayflies or things like that. You know, it's a similar situation where something's coming up to the top and there's a surface activity. Um, certainly the shrimp aren't actually hatching. It's just this low oxygenated water, which is because of that grass, all that bay grass with that west wind is pushed into these shorelines and just sat in there. And as it starts to de decay, you can look at it and it's clear right oh, here. And that's totally natural. All of that, what you, what you just described is totally natural. This, this grass is just free floating. It collects this time of the year and it pushes into the shoreline and we have these, these perfectly natural uh, grass lines. It's going to decay, the water's gonna sit there and there's not a lot of oxygen in there. There's, it is just a place where a tarpon is going to be able to use his advantages in, in his species. A tarpon can breathe through their gills. They can also come up and roll and take in air and he's clear headed and he can go in there and just eat whatever he wants. And that's kind of what we were finding. They're blasting all these things. The tarpon are saying, hey, the shrimp aren't getting away from us right now. This is a great opportunity. I'm going to eat every single one I can find. I have one over here to the other side, too. God, there he is. All right. Yeah. Nice. That's a good one. 
Wow. You just look wherever those shrimp are jumping, and that's where the fish are going to be. And luckily, right now, we've got tons of them jumping around us. Yeah. This guy's putting on a nice, nice. show. Nice. That's a decent fish. Yeah, it is. Man, I tell you what, I, if it's a tarpon, I don't care what size it is. I love these things. Every size. Maybe the smaller, the better, honestly. I make that cast just like I had just played in my mind. I make three or four strips, and sure enough, here's this big white flash right out there exactly where I was hoping. You know, everything's just coming together. It's, it's kind of fun like that. Like, you're like, okay, this is exactly what I've been waiting for. I need a fish right there about this distance away, and I'm going to strip the fly, and he's going to eat it. That's our biggest one of the day. Oh, look at that shrimp jumping right there. Oh, wow, that's what I'm look saying. Look at that, right next to your I think fish. There's, I think there's more fish right here because that's what those shrimp have been doing. And then I'd see, a, I'd see one bust. <laughs> that's awesome, man. Yeah. Nice job, man. I guess it's just habit of, of throwing out, reeling, trying to get it in front of a fish, you know, presenting it. That, that we were just moving it too fast. You started you know, to realize with the fly, moving it slower, you were getting bites. And then as we were moving down the fly, just kind of, I remember I was, I was running the trolling motor, you're up there fly casting. I was holding my, my rod in the water, literally just had the shrimp just dangling in the water to stay uh, you know, alive, you know, waiting to get up to the next bunch of fish. Yeah. And as I'm running the motor, I say, whoa! And, and I'm like, oh crap, something's eating it. And I'm thinking it's a little snapper, or jack, or something right there. And here's a friggin' tarpon right at the boat. Yeah. I couldn't believe it. Look at this, I hooked one right here. I'm right at the boat, a tarpon. I had the shrimp in the water. I've never seen that happen before, Tom. <laughs> oh my gosh, can you believe that? I was resting my shrimp in the water, like right on the surface, and he ate it right there. I think that means that you're supposed to be retrieving it slower. Wow. That is crazy. I think we're retrieving it too fast. Man. <laughs> That is crazy. I thought it must have, I was, I was sure it was gonna be a snapper or something. And I looked down and here's a tarpon. He hey, ate it right there. That's when you there. know fishing's good. Huh. Wow. That is crazy. <laughs> that's, that's, awesome. the first, that's the first time that's ever happened, man. Using binoculars in saltwater fishing is one of the most effective ways to find the fish. Whether it's inshore or offshore, binoculars can really help me to find fish more efficiently. I learned at an early age when I was mating on charter boats that uh, if you find the birds, you find the dolphin. Um, and at finding the birds, if you use a 10 power pair of binoculars, you're going to find 10 times more birds, 10 times more fish. So we learned at an early age to use these binoculars here. This is a uh, standard 7x50 set, which is good because offshore it's kind of rough. You don't want to have something that's too powerful. Otherwise Otherwise, you, you can't hold them steady. And what I really like is these have a, these are from Nikon. They have a compass built into them. So if I'm looking around and I see a set of birds, or I can just see, oh, it's uh, 220 degrees. I can tell the captain, or just remember that and go back and steer on the compass to 220 degrees, and we're going to get on the fish. And then on the inshore side, just as much. I love using them inshore. Um, it's not as rough inshore. We're not banging around so much, so I'll use a little bit different. Um, I can use these slightly smaller, more compact binoculars. This is the uh, uh, 10 by 42s. On a calm morning, I'll scan and I'll look for tarpon rolling. Um, up on a flat, I'll look for bonefish or redfish or permit tailing. Being able to distinguish is, is that a mullet, is that a stingray, is that a shark, or is that a target species like a bonefish or redfish. Really efficient, both offshore and inshore. A pair of binoculars will change your way of fishing. The Hawks K Saltwater Experience, presented by Yellowfin, is brought to you in part by Yellowfin, only in a Yellowfin. Mercury Marine, go boldly. Motor Guide. And by Daiwa, Ameritrail. Nikon, B and W trailer hitches, and Florida Marine Tracks. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching the show. You know we'd like to get to know you better, carry on the conversation, and the best way to do that is follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter.
we started to realize, man, we have to move things slow. There's something different. They're, the way they're eating, maybe it's because of the way the current was moving the shrimp and the, whatever. But all of a sudden, you know, it just changed the mentality of this happening is uh, we got to move it slow. You kept saying it, but it's almost hard to change your presentation when you're yeah. so used to doing it. And I finally, we cast out one time, and I remember you'd cast, and we kind of got our fly line and the uh, spinning rod tangled. Oh, there he is. Yeah, they all are. Here. There's so many. And here we were untangling it. I've got my shrimp in the water. You've got your fly line out there. So my shrimp's just sitting there, not moving. And the second you go, I got it, untangled, my rod goes, Whoa, look at that. <laughs> look at that. How about that? Really, that's what you need to do, man. Is Dude, it, it was stop, just sitting there. Stop. That is crazy. How about that? Literally leave it I in mean, the rod holder. twice now. Wow. How many more times does it need to happen? Wow. <laughs> Slow down. <laughs> wow. I've never seen anything like this. Like, we should just throw it and look at, put it in the rod holder. You know, it was just, just rewarding that, that we had worked through these situations to be able to take advantage of whatever these fish were doing. They were eating these shrimp. We were able to find the right fly. You were able to say, I'm going to stay with the shrimp and I'm going to have to change the way we're doing it. I'm going to move it really slow. Now you're catching them. We're both catching them. And we're able to take advantage of this really incredible situation and catch as many fish as we wanted to awesome. until we just decide you know what? How many of these do we need to catch? Let's leave them biting. If you can leave them biting, you did pretty good. Wow, this is probably my favorite size right here. They're just big enough to give you agree, all you man. want on those little light rods, but... Oh, look at this. A shrimp is jumping. Look at this. I caught it in my hand, Tom. Look at that. It, it was just one of the ones that's getting scared out of the water. That's the size. That's everything. That's what they're eating.